All right, just like last week, I need you to read all these and give me the gist of them. You know you're really going to have to start reading these yourself. What's going on, Geminites? Gemin here with today's new comic book day reviews. It's Wednesday, January 20th, and we have a large stack of awesome books this week. There's a lot of pick of the week contenders, and man, it's hard to choose like a pick of the week, like the worst book of the week. But we're going to go through these uh, as spoiler-free as possible. Make sure that you hit that subscribe. We're giving away a Batman Killing Joke CGC 9.8 once we hit 110,000 subscribers. Stick around to the end of the video, and I'll give you more details on how you could enter. We also got to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, that's SpidermanBooth.com. They have the $30 mystery boxes where you get five comics of retail value. One of those boxes is going to include this giveaway prize of a flashback number three. It's a 1973 reprint of USA number one, and it's signed by Stan Lee and Joe Simon. This is graded at an 8.5 by CGC and will be in one of those mystery boxes. If you use the code GEMMINT at checkout, you'll save $10 off as a one-time per customer use. All right, I got two books that I read digitally here from Image. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is Scumbag, issue number four. This one's by Rick Remender, Boshi, and Dinesio. Man, this book is crazy. Like, they kind of won me back with this issue a little bit. You have Scumbag trying to infiltrate the bad guy's lair, and the thing is, it's right up his alley. It's like a huge orgy of sex and drugs the whole entire time. The art is crazy. Crazy scenes in this book, and him basically trying to take part or to partake in all the events, but even he's not really getting lucky doing that, and then kind of gets called to business uh, and, and uh, kind of gets found out. So you can even see from the cover here, man, like what's going on here. Super graphic, funny dialogue, and I definitely <laughs> was digging Scumbag this week. And then from Image Skybound, we have Stillwater Issue 5. This is by Chip Zdarsky, Ramon K. Perez, and Mike Spicer. Love Stillwater. Stillwater is this little town. For whatever reason, you can't die while you're in this area so it deals with all like the nuances of what would it really be like if you could never die if you don't want people to find out you don't want the government poking around in there but the thing is after all these years and being in seclusion and not letting children grow the town's kind of revolting against their leader this judge they put in charge of the city and they're trying to overthrow him so that they can not only let people in but so that they can get out all right, and then from Boom Studios, we have Power Rangers. This is issue three by Parrot, Mortanero, and Angulo. So this picks up right where we left off with the last issue. Uh, we have the Omega Rangers with Lord Draken in space. They get attacked by these space vampires. So this basically concludes that arc. Is Lord Draken back up to his old ways? Has he turned a new leaf? Is he going to help them, or is he going to let them die under these seemingly much more powerful villains than what they're used to? We find all that out here. It's definitely a, a way different tone than Mighty Morphin. It's not that TV show feel where you have that friendly, lighthearted dialogue. This is like serious stuff with great artwork, great run. Before we jump into Future State, there are some DC Black Label titles here. We have Batman Catwoman Issue 2. This is by Tom King, Clay Mann, and Tommy Mori. So these, these issues so far, there's only been two. They've been kind of like flashbacks mixed with what's going on in real life. So we have Batman and Catwoman in the modern time, but then we have Catwoman in the future with an old Joker who looks like a retired Joker, and their banter back and forth. And he's definitely not the same sadistic Joker that we know. I'm actually more scared of Catwoman <laughs> in that interaction. But basically, you have her and Batman looking for this necklace thief in the modern time while we're getting these future visions of Catwoman and Joker. The artwork is great. Still not really clear on what's going on here. Some crazy scenes in that future version of uh, the Joker-Catwoman interaction, but I definitely enjoyed the book. Just kind of want to see where it's going. Another one from Black Label and another one from Tom King. We got Rorschach issue four. He's joined by Jorge Fornes and Dave Stewart. So this issue was kind of like... um a weird interrogation of this muscle man from the circus. This muscle man used to be friends with the kid, which is the Rorschach sidekick that we met in the first few issues. We got her backstory. Now we're getting like his perspective and kind of her MO of teaming up with these strong characters, getting them to dress up like Rorschach and be Rorschach. And uh, I don't know, this guy's kind of convinced, just like her father was convinced, that those squids, the squid invasion at the end of Watchmen was wave one and that wave two is them they're still here and they're you know fighting us uh telepathically with their minds so it was kind of interesting a kind of a, a weird twist on 
how many Rorschachs are there really? And kind of like Tom King, like you don't really know what's going on until we wrap up the series. And then we're kind of lucky if we know then. And then we have the conclusion of the deceased dead planet. This is issue seven out of seven from Taylor, Harrison, Baldessini, Dernick, and Barreto. Great issue, man. Like pick of the week contender because it you know wraps up this cool little mini series here. Uh, the final battle with Trigon the saving all of the people who are zombies on earth with the life equation and uh, superman and flash trying to rush around and, and give everybody the cure fighting the amazos and how do we take those down so um i don't want to say anything spoilerish for the ending because if i say one way or the other it's going to kind of spoil it so i like the ending i'm just going to leave it at that great artwork uh great surprises that happen throughout this series and nice to see it in all right, now on to Future State. We're going to start with the next Batman. This is issue two, and they have a ton of writers because this is basically three comics in one with an $8 price tag, and they do the writers first. So it's Ridley, uh, Ayala, Sevenberg, and then you got Braga, Aniki, Lupacino, Vaughn, Grawbadger, Prianto, Molehill, and Calise. <laughs> That's a lot of names, man. So the next Batman, the story itself is tight, man. You have... Tim Fox is Batman, and he sees uh, this brutal murder. These two thugs beat this guy to death with baseball bats, and they're brutal and relentless, and he investigates the death. He hunts down the two people, only to find out that it may not have been what it seemed. Great artwork, nice twist here. I like the whole magistrate. This whole future feels like Nueva York from like uh, Spider-Man 2099. Definitely dig in the next Batman story. The next two stories, not so much, man. So what were they even again? The Batgirl story. The Batgirl story was okay. You have um, this kind of weird future where all of the heroes are in Arkham Asylum or they're in prison. You have Stephanie, who is um, spoiler, and you have man, I can't even remember the other character. Oh, it's um, I can't even remember the character. The the, the girl from Suicide Squad movie, not Harley Quinn. Uh, the other girl, C Cassandra Kane. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, uh, so them in jail and trying to break out, whatever. That story was okay. The Gotham City Siren story, super whack, yo. Pick of the week, it was whack. Super whack. Uh, Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn with this futuristic android going to the club, dancing, drinking. I don't know. It was just lame. All right, then we have Nightwing number one. This one is by Constant Scott and Placencia. So just a regular issue, just one story. Great cover. And a cool little Dick Grayson Nightwing story here taking place in that same future where Tim Fox is Batman, Bruce Wayne is gone. These guys here, he's dead just like everybody else. And kind of Nightwing as part of the resistance trying to fight against the magistrate, fight against the whole peacemaker squad that's out there. Uh, super cool artwork in this book. I like the kind of acrobatics that they show him doing. And I like Dick Grayson's swag. It's a kind of another one where he's saving this couple that are getting harassed. But then he can tell the couple is not really, you know, just these good citizens like they should be. And it's just a great interaction. So digging this kind of future with uh, the Bat family. Then we have Immortal Wonder Woman issue one. So this is the Diana Prince Wonder Woman. And this has a backup story with Nubia. This is by... Clunan, Conrad, McKinney, Bartel, Martinez, Morales, and Lopez. So this was a really, really good issue, man. Great artwork here. We have the Diana Prince Wonder Woman. I know that we've seen a lot of the new Wonder Woman in Future State. But this is basically her at the end of the world, right? The end of the world where the anti-life equation seems to be destroying the universe. Apocalypse is getting destroyed. Dark side flees. He comes to Earth. Uh, we see an old Clark Kent, an old Superman. So that kind of lets us know where he is in this futuristic future state world. Uh, her, her trying to side with the Amazonians. Should they flee? Should they find another planet? Do they take a stand and fight? Uh, the battle between her and Darkseid, and it's going to continue. So really excited to see where it goes. Um, she's seeing like the stars in the sky go out and kind of can tell like that something is ending the universe, which sucks because this was birthed out of De uh, Dark Knight's death metal. So in this future, everything's still going to shit. Backup story with Nubia, super whack, man. So boring, I almost fell asleep. It had that one good panel that shows her as Wonder Woman. It's probably been on the internet. I'll put it up here. But otherwise, she goes to visit her aunt. That's, I don't know. It was just super lame. Like, I almost fell asleep. 
Okay, then we got Superman, His Worlds of War. Huge oversized issue. Another $8 book. This had four stories, and this had a ton of creators too. Johnson, Clunan, Conrad, Adams, Easton, Janin, Melenkov, Oum, DeLandro, Belair, Luis, and Hi-Fi. So you have a story with Clark Kent, Moonlighter, Black Racer, and Mr. Miracle. So the first story here, the main story, is basically this world where Clark Kent is dead, and you have the survivors, people that he saved throughout time, kind of meeting up at this place to remember him, and he means something different to everybody. You get all these flashbacks of him saving them, so that was pretty nice. He had good artwork there, but you have this main character who shows up who... Um, doesn't really agree with what they believe Superman to be and gets fed up and she leaves. So that's kind of the first story. Then you have these backup stories. So I don't even know who um, Moon, uh, Midnighter is. He kind of seems like the sadistic version of Batman. It was a pretty cool, gory, violent story. I kind of liked him as a character. The Black Racer and Mr. Miracle. It was almost like this kind of uh, Planet Hulk gladiator scenario where we end up here. And it seems like there's this version of Superman there who is Planet Hulk himself, right? So, I don't know. That was just okay. The Mr. Miracle stuff is kind of super boring, to be real. And it says it takes place after Superman uh, of Metropolis 2, and I don't think that's even come out yet. And, of course, that this is all in this world where uh, Jonathan Kent has put Metropolis in a bottle, kind of like the city of Kandor, to protect it. All right, then we have Catwoman issue one by Rom V with art by Schmidt. This is just a regular issue, and this is uh, in that same bat universe in the future kind of reminds me of like Snowpiercer if you ever saw that movie with Chris Evans where you have Selena Kyle's trying to jump on here hijack this train to save all the innocent people that are inside and what's interesting is that there is a very important person inside here which I didn't know was trapped because in another future state book they're around so I don't know if this is how that person gets freed but that's kind of the gist of this but it was a, a pretty cool quick issue and the last one from Future State, we have Shazam issue one. This is by Sheridan, Pansica, Ferreira, and Mayolo. So this is a, a world where Shazam is always Shazam. He never reverts back to Billy Batson. And there's kind of like this weird energy in the air on why is that? And he's been acting strange. There's been these surprise murders happening. The question is questioning him. And we, we kind of get a glimpse and find out at, at the end it has to deal with uh, Shazam and a battle in hell. So pretty interesting. Um, I'm down to read the next issue to see where it goes. All right, let's go over to Marvel. We have Cable by Phil Noto and Jerry Dugan. So this one finally picks up on the Cable story because he got sidetracked with this whole Ten of Swords where he's basically trying to find these kidnapped mutant babies that are being kidnapped by the Order of X. This kind of like mutant cult that is uh, capturing mutant babies and we find out for who in this book. So definitely a nod to Cable's past. Artwork is a little kind of amateur here. I don't really like how simple they draw Cable, this young version of Cable with very little detail, big circle head. Reminds me of like Doug Funny or something like that. But um, interesting. I'm, I'm glad to see them kind of picking up where the Cable story is and not being uh, stuck in like an event tie-in. Then we have X-Force 16. This is uh, by Benjamin Percy, Kasara, and Guru EFX. I think out of all the books this week, this had the strongest artwork. It just really popped. It was vibrant. A lot of bright different colors, the Krakoa stuff, Beast. And they're basically finding that Krakoa is invested with a parasite. So there's something wrong with Krakoa. He's got these kind of little uh, parasite molecules that are sprouting out to plants. Uh, X-Force team goes underwater to the fault to see what it is. And they, they see this big parasite thing. Namor's got to bail them out. Again, nice to see them back on their regular stuff, not stuck up in a tie-in. And I definitely enjoyed X-Force. Let's go over to Black Hat 2. This is a King of Black tie-in by McKay, Villa, and Reber. So I think the Black Hat stuff are the strongest tie-ins. I, I mean, besides like the Venom uh, solo series. But Black Hat trying to save Doctor Strange. You know, he got nullized and he's in his big sphere on top of the Chrysler building. She gets some tech because a good caper, all it needs is skill, tech, and luck. And she's got two of the three. So she gets some tech. I'm not going to really spoil what it is that helps her get to doctor strange but she gets there and it involves symbiotes and then of course there's symbiote dragons flying around and all that kind of stuff but uh fun issue felt important felt like this is going to matter and that's kind of what you want out of a tie-in
All right, then we got the new maestro number one, War and Pax. Peter David with Javier Pina and Jesus Albertov. Strong pick of the week contender. Pax stands for post-apocalyptic existence. And this is basically maestro, or Hulk, I should say, has now really become the maestro. And he wants everybody to bend the knee. So he's looking and finding these pockets of resistance and getting them to yield. And he finds this resistance that doesn't yield so easily. So that's where this story is going. Really enjoyed it so far. He had to fight this kind of android character, creature, while he's trying to take over their little underground bunker. Love the artwork here. I love this futuristic world. I love how much of an asshole Hulk is. Super fun book. All right, then we got a new Iron Fist, uh, The Heart of the Dragon by Hama, Watcher, and Menon. This is a new number one. I didn't have any expectations for this, and I really, really liked it. Basically, you have somebody that's out there hunting and killing dragons. There are the seven dragons, so uh, Danny Rand's got to go basically to defend them and fight these enemies that are out to slay the dragons uh, a familiar face is found at the heart of this a mercenary who was paid to uh, rip the heart out of a dragon so that was dope and then uh luke cage is babysitting and i don't i don't even know the little dragon they have it's like what is this uh lockheed or something so anyway when he realizes they're after dragons he's like oh crap i gotta head back home and uh uh, it was a good action packed good artwork i really like the uh design that they used for danny Rand. they kind of got his vest with his logo on it but his tattoo coming through the chest i thought it was pretty cool luke cage didn't really feel like luke cage to me but uh we're only one issue in so i'm going to continue to read it all right guys that leaves the pick of the week and you know it had to be that king in black issue three donny cage ryan stegman uh with mayor and martin Man, Thor is in the house, and he's not playing any games. Thor versus Null, great battle. Artwork is great here. Dylan stepping up to the plate, doing what we kind of expected him to do. Null being the void, the king of black, right? And we we were hinted through a lot of these other issues and preludes that there's an opposite. There's this king of light, this god of light uh, who exists somewhere. And as I'm getting to the last page, I'm like, yo, I think I know who it is. And I was so right, but I'm not going to spoil it. But we see who is the the brother of Noel? Who is the light to his darkness? And how is that person going to tie in to help destroy Noel? So uh, loved it. You know, I love the Thor, and I feel like Donny Cates is just playing in his toy box, man. He's got Venom, now he's bringing Thor into this, and now they're all together, and it made for a really epic issue. So that's my pick of the week. Let me know what your pick of the week was in the comments down below. Like I said, we're about to hit 110,000 subscribers, and we're going to give away this Batman Killing Joke CGC 9.8. All you got to do to enter is be subscribed and leave a comment on this video and any other video where I promoted the giveaway. Once we hit the milestone, I use a random YouTube comment generator to pick a worldwide winner. Before I get up out of here, you guys got to check out Street Level Hero. If you want to support the channel and get some great variants at the same time, they have a Hellions 9 and a Strange Academy 8 exclusive variant out right now if you use the code gem mint you'll save 10 percent off of those and any item on the store and that code is good for life you can use it multiple times it'd be a big help to us at the channel and you get some cool stuff as well as always i appreciate you watching check out my other new comic book day reviews in the playlist to the right and stay minty fresh peace